Hello everyone, my name is Cyndaquil and welcome back to another video. A while back I made a video of obtaining all the Shadow Pokemon and acquiring Ho-Oh in Pokemon Coliseum. I'll link that video in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. To follow up, in this video I'll be taking on the task of 100%ing Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. XD has a whopping 83 Shadow Pokemon, this is quite the jump up from the 48 in Pokemon Coliseum. XD also has a total of 50 battle CDs which present challenging unique battle situations to complete. The goal of this challenge is to capture and purify all 83 Shadow Pokemon, complete all the battle bingo cards, complete Mount Battle and the Coliseums, complete all the battle CDs, and finish any and all side quests in the game. As with my Coliseum playthrough, I completed this challenge on original hardware and on my Twitch, so feel free to check that out as well. With the challenge laid out, let's begin. The game begins with what I would consider one of the coolest Pokemon cutscenes ever made. A ship named the Libra is attacked and stolen by a Shadow Lugia. The main character of XD is named Michael, and we first meet them completing a battle sim against a Metagross. We start out with an Eevee this time around as opposed to Espeon and Umbreon, and we make our way through the Pokemon Research Lab. We meet up with Lily and Crane, and we receive our PDA in our room. We then head into a room with a Quagsire and Psyduck and see a news report on the TV that goes over the attack on the Libra that we saw at the beginning of the game. We then meet Aiden who is playing hide and seek with our sister Jovi and he suggests we look for her at Dr. Kaminko's manor. We make our way to the manor and meet Chobin. We beat the brakes off of Chobin and his son Kern and we see our sister Jovi emerge from the manor. Afterwards, we head in and Chobin leads us to Dr. Kaminko where we retrieve our sister and her plusle. We leave the manor and head back to the Pokemon Research Lab. After we return Jovi, Crane wants to see us ASAP. Turns out Crane has a SAG machine for us and he wants us to test it for him. Crane continues to tell us about Shadow Pokemon and gives us the Shadow Monitor. We head outside where we see the bodies of research employees scattered around the ground. Crane is being held hostage by spies and we can add our first Shadow Pokemon to our account, Shadow Teddy Ursa. After the battle, we see the spies kidnap Crane. We head up to the lab and meet with Lily and she tells us to get a special machine part for the purified chamber. We take Jovi along and make our way to Gate and Port. Arriving in Gate and Port, our sister runs into Johnny Bravo and he attacks with his Zangoose. A strapping young fellow, Mr. Varric, intervenes and his blue haired bodyguard takes care of the Zangoose. After the beatdown, we learn his name is Ardos and the trio heads off. We head to the Mart and acquire a Sun Shard which will allow us to get the Goat, Espeon. After seeing how the Vertain Bridge works, we head back to the Mart and get the machine part for the Purified Chamber. Before leaving, we can add Ladybug and Poochiana to our account. We then head back to the Research Lab. We give the part over to Lily and she mentions a Gate Village has a relic that can purify Shadow Pokemon. We make our way over. Arriving, we meet up with Ella and Egan charges in to tell us about the Relic Forest which has the Relic Stone. In the forest, we fight a few trainers and finally meet with Egan. He challenges us to a battle and we decimate his Pikachu. He tells us about cologne massages and ways to open up a Shadow Pokemon's heart. After we purify our Teddy Ursa, we meet back at Egan's house where he tells us about Vander and if you're familiar with Coliseum, you know who he is. Our next stop is Mount Battle. Arriving at Mount Battle, we meet up with the red-haired bodyguard we met in Gate and Port. He encourages us to take the Mount Battle challenge and Vander is training rookies. We meet up with Vander and he tells us about the Cypher Research Facility. We make our way over and a battalion of Power Rangers emerge from the lab. Battling them one by one, we can add Seedot, Mareep, Sveal, Baltoy, Houndor, and Galpin to our account. We make our way through the lab and into the basement where we can add Spinarak to our account. Afterwards, we see our kidnapped friend Crane, but before we can save him, we are able to add Nummel, Carvana, and Shroomish to our account. We finally make it to Crane where Naps is guarding him. We devastate Naps and rescue Crane. On our way out of the lab, we are stopped by Cypher Admin Sakura. Sakura has a super annoying Delcaddy, but after some time, we defeat her and add her Delcaddy to our account. Her assistant drops a Data ROM that we take back to the research lab with our now rescue Crane. Arriving back at the lab, we're finally notified that the purified chamber is completed. We learn how the chamber works and we can now officially utilize the chamber by using sets to purify. This is a much faster process than what we had to do in Coliseum. To explain a set, for example, if we take a Shadow Seedot, 
All we need to do is put regular Pokemon in the outer ring. The more Pokemon added to the ring, the quicker the purification. To put it simply, if I have Mareep, Sfeel, and Baltoy in the set, since one is super effective against the other, our tempo will be higher. After that, we can essentially set it and forget it, and eventually we'll be notified when the Pokemon is purified. The more regular Pokemon with the Shadow Pokemon, the faster purification process. Continuing, we're then told about Dayton, who is in the process of deciphering the data ROM we found at the Cypher Research Facility. Unfortunately, Dayton can't do the job, so Crane suggests we see ONBS in Pyrite Town, aka we get to see Net from Coliseum. Heading to Pyrite Town, we see Trudley and Folly yet again trying to turn a new leaf, but the officer will have no part in that. We head through town into what was formerly Mirror B's hideout, aka Afro Samurai. This is ONBS, and we head through the building and meet up with Sek, who is a part of the Children's Network. He tells us about the shadow incident that happened five years ago, and sends us on our way to Net to decipher the data ROM. We head upstairs and find Detro, who is Net's doorman, and we finally get to meet the man of the hour. Net says he can decipher the data ROM, but it will take some time, so let's check in our good friend Dukey. New to XD are Poke Spots, which are areas you can leave Poke Snacks and it will attract wild Pokemon. Duking is at one of these spots getting interviewed by the ONBS news team. We're given the spot monitor, which will let us know when a Pokemon is at the Poke Spot. We then head off and leave Poke Snacks at the other two Poke Spots. At the cave Poke Spot, we find Trudley and Folly, and turns out they are working with Afro Samurai. We approach, but are interrupted by the legend himself. Afro Samurai challenges us to a battle and we're able to add Voltorb to our account. We head back to Pyrite and find out OMBS has been attacked. Cypher is infiltrated and we have to fire away through the building. Along the way we're able to add Makuhila, Volpix, Duskull, and Ralts to our account. Finally, arriving at Net's office, we battle Cypher Commander Exol and we can add Mawile to our account. Turns out Exol stole the data ROM and makes his escape. Net wasn't able to decipher the entire data ROM, but he tells us that Cypher was behind the ship incident at the start of the game, and that they plan to attack Phoenix City. Before we leave Pyrite, we take on the Coliseum challenge, and after winning, we head on over to Phoenix City. Arriving in Phoenix City, we're visitor number 1 million and receive a disc case which has some of the battle CDs we're looking for. After, we unlock Rogum Tower and head on over. Arriving, we see Trudley and Folly yet again. Rugum Tower is where we can use our battle CDs, but for now we're just going to head back to Phoenix. We make our way through Phoenix and pick up the music disc. We then head over to the mayor's house and hand his assistant the music disc and then collect the mayor's note upstairs. Turns out the assistant is actually a cypher peon, and we're able to add Snow Run to our account. We then head downstairs and get another cypher peon in disguise. We devastate them and we can add Pine Code to our account. Emerging from the center building, we see the Power Ranger Battalion in disguise and they disperse through the city. We head inside the building they came out of and surprise surprise, more Cypher Peons. We're then able to add Natu, Roselia, and Meowth to our account. Leaving, we make our way to the Phoenix Coliseum but we're stopped by a Cypher Peon. We can then add Swine Up to our account. Once inside the stadium, we go through a Peon Gauntlet and we can add Sparrow and Grimer to our account. We head to the center and meet Snazzle, who is the Ore region's promised governor. Not too happy with us, he sticks Egrog on us, and we can add Seal to our account. Upset, Snazzle challenges us to a battle. He has a pretty annoying team with the likes of Lantern, Quagsire, Castform, Matang, and his Shadow Lunatone, which we can then add to our account. After his defeat, he scurries off and we meet Marcia, who captured the whole ordeal on film. We receive the elevator key and head back over to the center building, which I'll just call the gym from now on. Using the key, we head down and see all the citizens of Phoenix were trapped down there and we free them. We meet Mayor Trest and he wants to give us a thank you at his house. Before we leave, we head back down and collect Battle CD 35. As we leave the gym, we can add Battle CD 8 as well. We also find Battle CD 28 outside of the Mayor's house. We then head in and find Battle CD 27 and 32. The mayor then gives us an XP share, which will come in handy. We then check out his bookcase and find Battle CD 12. Before we leave, we also grab Battle CD 16. We can finally head out of Phoenix, but our scooter can't make it through the deep sand of the northern desert. Instead, we head to Pirate Town to meet up with Ned, 
but we're told about the Libra disappearance and a new species of Pokemon, Bonsly. This is cool as it's the first time we as gamers are told of a Gen 4 Pokemon. We're then told to see Purr in Gate and Port to upgrade our scooter to traverse the deep sand. We head on over to Gate and Port. We head to the parts shop and on the news we see how we destroyed Snazzle. We're then told Purr's grandpa is at Kaminko Manor, so guess where we're heading? As we leave Gate and Port, we see Varric and his bodyguards, and he congratulates us on our heroics at Phoenix City. At Kaminko Manor, we meet up with Chobin, who thinks we're a burglar, so we have to remind him that we're that guy, and destroy him in battle. Kaminko then tells us to prepare ourselves, and out comes Chobin, who is clearly compensating for something with his massive Groudon mech suit. Nothing changes, and Chobin once again is defeated. Kaminko mentions a half-built Robo Kyogre that was scrapped, and this will be important later on. Heading inside the manor, we head to the basement and we see said Robo Kyogre, and we meet Macon, who is Purr's grandpa. Macon upgrades our scooter and decides to finish up the Robo Kyogre project. We also grab Battle CD 23. With our upgraded scooter, we can finally head north to SS Libra. The SS Libra is an interesting place, and as we traverse through, we see Gorgon, who is an admin, and he sicks his Cypher Peons on us. Of course, we win, and we head inside the wheelhouse and find Battle City 18. Continuing through the ship, we find Bonsley. It runs away, so we'll have to find it at a wild spot later on. As we leave, a trio of Red Foremen stop us, and they want our Snag Machine. Their Gloom uses Cardi B on us, and we lose our Snag Machine. We then take a trip to what looks like the Pyramid of Light from the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, and see Johnny Bravo. He challenges us to a battle and unfortunately we cannot add Zangus to our account. Unable to enter the pyramid, we then head to Gate and Port to get an interview quickly done. We then head to Pirate Town to see Sek who tells us that he is investigating Team Snagum and lets us know to check out someone named Hordell at the outskirts stand. We head on over to the outskirts stand and once again Trudley and Folly are there with Afro Samurai. We do battle and the trio flee after being defeated. We head inside the stand and find Tordell, and he mentions he fled from the key lair, Pyramid of Light. As we are leaving, we got an email from Sex saying he has located Team Snagum and their group leader Gonzap aka Waluigi. Before we can make our way to the hideout, Willy from the first game challenges us to a battle. We completely crush his hopes and dreams and head back into the stand and Tordell gives us Togepi, which we can add to our account. Arriving at the Team Sagam hideout, not much has changed since Colosseum. We defeat a plethora of Red Foremans and finally confront Waluigi. Before battle, we can avenge ourselves against the Red Foremans that use Cardi B to steal our snag machine. Waluigi then challenges us to a battle with the promise of winning back our snag machine. We make quick work of him and finally we can start adding Shadow Pokemon back to our account. We head to a gate village where we can find Battle CD 14 that Wobbuffet had. Our next task is to find Afro Samurai, since we are unable to add his nose pads to our account earlier at Outskirts Stand. After some time, we finally find him at Pyrite Town and can add nose pads to our account. Next up is the Pyramid of Light. This is where mad shadow Pokemon are produced. Johnny Bravo is still chilling out front, so we can add Zangus to our account. As we attempt to head inside the pyramid, we are stopped by two buff men. After some talking, Waluigi shows up and Red Foreman uses the Cardi B power to put the buff men to sleep. The pyramid is massive, but along the way we're able to add Paris, Growlithe, Shelder, Beedrill, Pidgeotto, Tangela, Butterfree, and Magneton to our account. We find the system lever and head to the top of the pyramid. At the top we can add Venomoth and Weeping Bell to our account. We hand the scientist the system lever and he's so thankful he challenges us to a battle. After the clapping, we use the system lever which affects the voltage of the pyramid. As we start to descend, the pyramid rumbles and the center door opens up and we're challenged by Smarten. We can then add Arbok to our account. Heading inside, we see Gorigan, the man we saw in the SS Libra. After a relatively tough battle, we can add Primate and Hypno to our account. After his loss, he threatens to blow up the pyramid. Mr. Varric appears on the TV screen. Turns out this is Master Grievel, or Dr. Evil, and he lets us know that Shadow Lugia is complete. He then proceeds to tell us exactly where he is in evil character fashion and how to get there. 
He is at Citadark Island, which can be accessed via gate and port. Before we leave, we head into the basement and grab Battle CD 47. We then head on over to Realgum Tower to knock out Battle CD 35. It's a metronome battle, so after some shenanigans, we complete it. We then head to the top of Realgum Tower to take on the Coliseum. The Coliseum challenge is four long rounds of battles, but after some time, we complete the challenge. We leave Realgum and head on over to Gate and Port. We visit the part shop and Purr lets us know his grandpa is working on the Robo Kyogre. Turns out the Robo Kyogre can reach the Dark Island. Before we can embark, we receive an email from Crane and he has something to give us. We head to the lab and receive the Master Ball. Now, before we continue, the Master Ball feature is not an XD. That means this Master Ball is one and done. With that out of the way, we head back to Gate and Port. Arriving, it's time to give the Robo Kyogre a ride to Citadark Island. Citadark is basically a volcano island and there are a lot of Shadow Pokemon to collect, so get ready for a lot of additions to our account. As we move through the island, we can add Golduck and Sableye to our account. We can also grab Battle of CD 31 from a Sailor. Continuing through the island, we can add Dodrio and Raticate to our account. We reach an elevator and Sakura is back for revenge. After a tough battle, we can add Farfetch and Altaria to our account. She's visibly upset that she got demolished again and we continue through the island. On our way, we can add Kangaskhan and Banette to our account. Now in the heart of the volcano, we do our best Chris Redfield impersonation and push overly large blocks into lava. We can now add Magmar and Pinzer to our account. Heading even deeper into the volcano, we can add Rapidash, Macargo, Hitmonchan, and Hitmonlee to our account. We can finally make our way out of the volcano and back to the surface. We traverse the Twilight Princess looking moving platforms and go even further up to the crane room. After some platforming, we ascend even higher and we can add Lickitung, Chansey, and Scyther to our account. We finally get to the top in a pretty tricky part of the game. We have a rematch with Snow, and it's a pretty tough one with the likes of Scizor and Matang, but we win and we can add Solrock and Starmie to our account. We then approach the Pleasure Dome, and Ardos is awaiting us, and man, what a battle this was. With a fun team of Alakazam, Shadow Swellow, which we add to our account, Kingdra, Heracross, Shadow Electabuzz, and Shadow Snorlax, which we add both those to our account as well, this battle was pretty tricky, but we persevered. We enter the Pleasure Dome, and Dr. Evil is waiting for us, and he does his typical evil villain dialogue, and blocks us from approaching him. When we leave, Gorgon shows up and he is not nearly as difficult as Ardos. We can then add Polyrath and Ash's dad to our account. We head down through the island and can add Doug Trio to our account. We find a side entrance to Dr. Evil and Eldis challenges us to a battle. We can add his Manectric, Salamence, Lapras, and Marowak to our account. Before we can fight Dr. Evil, it's time to finally battle Shadow Lugia. To this day, I feel this is the best design of a Pokemon, and also Lugia is my favorite legendary. In the most climactic way, we just use our Master Ball and catch Lugia to add to our account. Now it's time to fight Dr. Evil. This is easily one of the hardest fights I've done in a vanilla Pokemon game. His team consists of 6 Shadow Pokemon, and after some trial and error we can add Rhydon, Moltres, Exeggutor, Tauros, Articuno, and Zapdos to our account. After his defeat, Ardos is in disbelief and Eldis says Cypher is finished. Dr. Evil insists Cypher lives on and we learn that Ardos and Eldis are actually Dr. Evil's sons. Eldis lets us know that we have helped him and his family and with all that out of the way, we have completed the main story of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. But we are not finished just yet. Back at the lab, we receive an email from Egan inviting us to the Ore Coliseum. We grab Battle CD 33 and head outside to meet with Egan and do battle. After defeating Egan, we have unlocked the Ore Coliseum. Before we take on this challenge, we need to prep, so let's head to Pyrite. Inside Dukings, we grab Battle CD 22 and Battle CD 40. We then head to Realgum Tower to knock out some of the Battle CDs. Before we do, we actually purchase Battle CD 2, 3, and 4. We knock out Battle CD 1, 2, 3, Four, and we're then able to purchase Battle CDs 9, 13, and 17. We then complete Battle CD 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then we can then purchase Battle CD 25, 26, and 30. We then complete Battle CDs 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 40. After completing 40, we get Battle CD 41, which we complete as well. After completing some CDs, we set out to acquire Bonsley. In order to get Bonsley, we must place snacks at all the Poke Spots. As we wait for the Poke Spots to get some action, we head on over to Cypher Lab. Inside, we grab Battle CD 42. Now, the time has come. The Ore Coliseum. All the trainers in this insane gauntlet have perfect IV Pokemon and competitive builds and items, so it's a fun time. The Coliseum is 7 4 round battles, but, and this is a huge, huge but, we only need to complete one round to count for 100%. Our team for this challenge is Espeon, Snorlax, Ursarang, Butterfree, and Mr. Mime. Here's my build on each of the Pokemon for anyone struggling. Typically going with a Protect Earthquake or Protect Self-Destruct is the play. Keep in mind I use the speedrun strats for this team build. After each series of battles we rematch all the Cypher admins we face throughout the game. However, right now we're just going to complete one of the four rounds and defeat Sakura. We then head over to a gate village. We meet up with Bella who lets us know a strange affliction has been affecting the Pokemon in a gate. It is our job now to analyze the five Pokemon that live in a gate. We first visit the Wobbuffet house with Selenor who mentions a device that translates a Pokemon's cry. We head to the Pokemon Center and learn that Dr. Kaminko was responsible for inventing this device. With that info, we head on over to the Kaminko Manor and we grab Battle CD 49, 11, 5, 50, and 29 before we confront Dr. Kaminko. We explain what is happening in a gate village and he gives us the voice case 1 to remove the Pokemon translation device. Back in the gate, we go from house to house removing the translation devices from the Pokemon affected, and each time we receive another voice case until all five Pokemon are healed. Eventually, Bonsley shows up at one of our Poke spots and we can finally return it to its family. We're also given the Bonsley Bingo card, which we can use at Realgum Tower. Since we're in Nett's office, we grab Battle CD 36 and head downstairs and grab Battle CD 38, 24, and 21 as well. We receive an email from Meg of OMBS saying her shroomish has lost its voice and it's our job to fix that. Dr. Kaminko hands us voice case 5 which contains shroomish's cry so we head to OMBS to save shroomish. Once we have saved the day, Dr. Kaminko gives us the cry analyzer. Our goal now is to basically talk with every Pokemon in the Ori region so buckle in. We first head to gate and port to use the cry analyzer on Oddish and Magnemite. Before we continue, however, our Afro Samurai radar goes off and we whoop him yet again. We can add Dragonite to our account. This is sadly the last time we will see him and he runs off while his Ludicolo dances the night away. We then head over to Citadark Island and collect Battle CD 46. Back in Gate and Port, we head upstairs in the cafe and grab Battle CD 6 and find a Krabby we can use the Cry Analyzer on. We head on over to Phoenix City and analyze Azumarill, Casform, Lanoon, and Seedot. We also grab Battle CD 44 and 10. We head back to a gate and turns out the Wobbuffet isn't affected by the Cry Analyzer, so we head back to Dr. Kaminko. He suggests we speak to it as a Pokemon to solve our issue. Before we do that, we head to Mount Battle to analyze Delcaddy. Back in the gate, we tell Selenor about speaking the Wobbuffet as a Pokemon and voila, it works. Afterwards, we approach Lotad who is having a similar issue but we're able to solve it now. With Lotad out of the way, we head back to Bella and she rewards us with the Lucky Egg. With a tricky side quest out of the way, we head to Rogum Tower to complete some Battle Bingo. I'm not really sure how to describe Battle Bingo, but you select panels with types on it that allow you to catch Pokemon and Battle Pokemon, and for the Bonsley card, we call it Aeron, Curlia, and Talo. We then proceed to clear the board of the other Pokemon, and that's how you win. Battle Bingo is a very unique game mode, and honestly, it was a nice change of pace. We then go on to complete the Novice, regular, expert, and all the extra bingo cards. I won't go into heavy detail about them as it's more of the same, pick types to counter certain types, and so forth. With all the battle bingo cards out of the way, it's time to wrap up the battle CDs. After some crazy trial and error, we've completed all of the battle CDs in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Now, 
for a fun trip down memory lane. If you have watched my Colosseum video, you know the legend of Mount Battle and the shenanigans I experienced. Well guess what, we get to do it all over again in XD. The difference here in XD is we are not level locked like in Colosseum where we got Hoel. Here's the team I'll be using for Mount Battle. So our Espeon and Earth Rain will dominate most of the areas until around areas 8 through 10 where the AI gets a bit smarter. After what seemed like an eternity, Mount Battle has finally been conquered. With all the side quests, Mount Battle, Battle Bingo, and the Battle CDs completed, all we have left to do is to purify all of our Shadow Pokemon. The only tricky Shadow Pokemon to purify is Lugia. As a kid, I really thought it was impossible, but eventually I figured it out. You must have each purified chamber set max tempo and flow in order to purify Lugia. Here's the sets I used to make it happen. There we have it. XD 100% is done. Lugia is purified. It's over. It's done. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. With Lugia purified, I can officially say I have 100% Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. So, how did I do? I came to this challenge feeling pretty confident, honestly it wasn't super difficult, just a bit tricky at times. I do want to shout out some of the 100% guides I watched to prep for this video, mainly Ryzakin's 100% speedrun video just to figure out what exactly was needed to truly 100% this game. This challenge took me 38 hours to complete, which is absolutely insane because it's the exact same time it took me to complete Colosseum. As a Pokemon Coliseum, I genuinely love the Ori region games and I want more and more people to see how great they are. I'm not too sure what game I'll aim to 100% next, but please feel free to leave suggestions in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to sub and like the video, it helps out a ton. Thanks for watching.